I'm going to show you how to replace a motor in a Kenmore gas dryer. This is a Kenmore 90 series gas dryer. You want to unplug it before you start working on it and turn off the gas. You want to pry these end caps off. They should just pull forward. There's a screw at each end of this panel to remove. It's a Phillips. Now you pull the panel forward just a little bit and rotate it back and let it rest by itself. Now there's three screws to remove. There, there, and there. Quarter inch nut driver. Now the top panel just comes forward. Pull it towards you and it comes right off. Take the lint screen out. Now we need to get the lower kick panel off. There's two clips, one on either side, located about three and a half inches in. I'm going to use a five and one tool, which is this, to push it in and release those clips. I use a paper towel so I don't scratch the surface of the dryer. Push the five and one tool in, push it in, pull the panel forward. Now the panel comes up and off. These are the two clips you're pushing with either a five and one tool or a screwdriver to release the tension on them or spring on them. Now you remove the two door springs, one there and one there. Just pull down on the spring Down here on the right hand side, there's a yellow wire. It's the moisture sensor wire. You need to remove that. I'm using a pair of needle nose pliers to remove that moisture sensor wire. Pull it right off. Now you're going to remove two screws for the upper panel. That's one, the other one's over here. the lint screen duct. You'll have two screws to remove. That one and that one. Once you remove those two screws, the lint screen duct comes right off. Now you need to remove these wires before you remove this top door panel. I used a marker to mark the connectors and where they go. So three dots for the white one, two dots for the blue wire, and one dot for the brown wire. It's just easier for me to remember where they go, and you'll have to release this connector. I'm just grabbing hold of the ends and pulling them off. If you need help pulling them off, use some needle nose pliers. So be careful not to cut yourself, these edges are sharp, so be a little careful there. All of these edges of these panels, the ones you take off the top, the lower panel, and this panel, all of these are sharp, so be very careful, they can cut you. Now you have two screws to remove from the top panel, one here and one here, and then we're going to lift this panel off. Lift up on this panel to remove it or pull it forward. This drum is going to want to sink down, so you want to lift up on that drum a little bit to remove this panel. Then you can just rest the drum. Now the drum has to come out. To get the drum out, we have to release the tension on this belt. That's the idler pulley right there I'm pointing at. To release the tension on the belt, we have to push that idler pulley up and to the left to release the tension. Once we've done that, we can remove the belt, unloop it 
from the idler pulley and the shaft of the motor. I'm reaching my left hand in from the left side of the drum and my right hand in through here. We're gonna remove the drum now. Most people do it by pulling up on the belt. The belt carries the weight of the drum and they pull the drum out. Here's why I don't like that. There are two indentations on the front of this dryer cabinet, one there and one here. That sharp metal. And what happens is when you pull that drum out and bring that belt along with it, that belt gets caught up on this sharp metal. That can cut the belt, so I wouldn't do it that way. So here's how I remove the drum. I'm gonna pull up on the belt and start moving the drum out toward the front. Once I can get my hand behind the back of that drum, I'm going to push this belt off the back so it can go free and not have to make it past these sharp edges because if I wanna reuse that belt, I don't wanna cut or braid that belt. And there's the motor we're going to replace. Remove the wiring harness by pinching the upper and lower tangs together. Now you want to remove the trim from the blower housing. It's two screws. And pull this piece off. There's a tang right down here you have to be careful of. I pull it up and remove the trim. Now we need to remove the blower wheel. I'm using a 7 16 wrench, the open end, to place on the square shoulders that are on the shaft of that motor toward the blower housing. I'm going to rest that wrench right here on this screw so that it stops that wrench from moving. I'm going to use a half inch ratchet with a half inch extension. The extension goes in the center of that wheel. You want to make sure the ratchet is in the tightening position because the wheel loosens by rotating clockwise. You spin the wheel off, pull this tab at the bottom here all the way back, and bring that wheel out. It's a good idea to clean the wheel since you have it out. Since you're this far into it, you wanna clean this area of all the lint and gunk and as far back as you can in this exhaust. Now you wanna remove these two clips, that one and that one. You use a screwdriver to do that. You want to make sure you wear safety glasses because those are under tension. You're putting the screwdriver right down there on that tang and pushing down and away from you. Down and away. Now you remove these three screws, that one, that one, and that one, so that it releases the motor bracket from the blower housing. Use a quarter inch nut driver for that. Careful of that clip, it's sharp and it will cut you. Now you're going to remove these two screws down here, quarter inch nut driver. Now we're gonna lift the motor out. It comes with the bracket. This is the motor I just took out of the dryer. This is the replacement motor. 
I got this motor from a Kenmore 90 series gas dryer that I got off of Craigslist for $20. And when I was removing the motor, I also removed all of the control circuit components. All of these. I also took the control panel and all the wiring, the rollers. So now if I have to replace any parts, I have them all. They all work. So now I'm going to replace the motor with this one that I know works. So listen to this, y'all. Hear that clicking? That's a belt switch. It's a cutoff switch. So if your belt breaks and then this idler pulley loses tension, it'll cut the power to the motor. It's a good time to clean the idler pulley as well. It's got a keeper you remove, just like you remove the rollers. Comes right off. I'm cleaning mine with a little denatured alcohol. A little silicone lubricant spray around there. Put the keeper back on. Now before I remove the motor, I have to remove this wire and this wire. I'm going to use a little wide out to denote where they come from so I know where they go back on. Now the motor lifts off. I'm going to clean up this bracket for the motor because I'm going to use my original bracket. I'm going to put the motor in now. You want to make sure the notch on the motor lines up with the notch on this motor bracket. Just like that. Put the clips back on the motor. Reattach the wires. Put the two screws back in the bottom of the bracket. Put the connection on. Put the three screws back in the blower housing to the bracket. Place the 7 16 wrench on the motor shaft and the handle of it up against the screw coming out of the blower housing so it will stop the wrench from moving as you're tightening the wheel. Put the wheel back in, pull this tab back, you screw it counterclockwise to tighten it on. Put the ratchet in the loosening position. and tighten the wheel. Now put the trim back on the blower housing. If you're replacing your motor, you should check your rollers. Make sure they spin freely. Those rollers are really easy to get off. 
Here's how you remove these rollers. You take a little screwdriver, work it under that keeper, and work the keeper up. and the keeper comes off. Then the roller comes right off. Then I use a little bit of silicone lubricant spray. I put that in a container and I use a Q-tip to lubricate around this shaft. Then I put a little bit right in here and I put it back on. Then I pop the keeper back on. There's also two rollers on the front panel where the door is. The upper panel, there's one there and one right there that you want to check and make sure they spin freely. And I'd lubricate those shafts as well. You want to make sure that both the idler pulley and the rollers spin freely. If they don't, either one can cause your belt to slip. Time to put the dryer back together. So the drum goes in first. I put the belt on the drum to put the drum back in because as you clear these areas on both sides, it's smooth and won't cut the belt. When you're putting the drum in, you want the rim of the drum on the back to rest on those two rollers right there. Now we have to loop the belt back around the idler pulley and the motor shaft. To align the belt, rotate the drum clockwise. I'm going to put the front top panel on now. What you want to do is get those two rollers under the lower lip of that drum and then use your knee on the panel to push in and pull up. Now replace the two screws on the top panel. Attach the four wires to the front panel. Reattach the moisture sensor wire right there, y'all. It's time to put the lint screen housing back in. There's a clip down here. The bottom of this lint screen housing, right there rests in the dip of that clip, the indentation. And then you put your two screws in on either side of this lint screen housing. Place the two lower screws for the top panel. Replace the door springs. I'm going to put the lower panel on now. There are two clips at the bottom of the dryer that this panel rests on. So you put them in their slots. You rotate the panel up, press down these two springs, clips, and press it in. Put the lint screen back in. Now I'm going to put the top panel back on. You just set it on top. and slide it back. You want to make sure that the panel is under these tabs. Now you replace the three top screws. Rotate the control panel down. Replace the screw on each side. Replace the trim pieces. And that's how you replace a motor in a Kenmore gas dryer. Hope it helps.
and happy DIYing.